You're looking at the first ever documented case of the phenomenon known as river piracy. First one in modern history, and it happened in Canada's north. Research released today shows that a river that flowed from a giant glacier vanished over four days last spring. For centuries, the Slims carried water from the Kaskawulsh Glacier northwards. But now that water is flowing south. Over time, meltwater carved a new canyon to a lower elevation, and last spring, intense melting of the glacier tipped the balance of the drainage system, making this river go dry. That's not the only way climate change is altering Canada's landscape. The ground under the far north is also shifting. As it turns out, permafrost isn't that permanent. It's melting at a faster rate than previously thought. And all that thawing is actually contributing to global warming. The CBC's David Common explains. Hard to believe at minus 20, but the ground under these Inuit kids is melting. It's happening fast across Canada's Arctic. And as a result, the earth is sinking. The ground was level right there with the, uh, with the landing of the stairways. In less than three decades, Merv Grubin has seen big change. Say 60, 70 centimeters, good two, two and a half feet. But this, this is just some, some areas. There's a lot of other areas that are uh, more extreme. More than a third of Canada's landmass is permafrost, a mixture of ice and sediment dating back to the last ice age. But after 10,000 years, climate change is now prompting thaw. The ground is sinking, creating new lakes and landslides. They're really, um, really remarkable changes that have happened in a very short amount of time. For researchers, it's a double whammy. Permafrost is a carbon sink, so the melt releases emissions over a vast area. Oh! And the worst of it is methane, now bubbling out from permafrost from under Arctic lakes. It's flammable, but also a key greenhouse gas. So we have sort of this feedback that we're seeing cl um, climate change affect permafrost and the permafrost degradation enhancing the, the climate change. Out with Anuvix Mayor, it's a tour of the thaw's impacts. Here, a prematurely closed detention center. Over the years, it's actually started to slide off of its foundation. And a soon-to-be-demolished warehouse where piles driven deep into the permafrost have shifted. The freezing is, is, is pushing this pile here on the corner up and you can see how it's, just, it's pushed it up right off of the other piles there. At the newest building in town, the RCMP detachment sits on deep piles which are actually refrigerators and can be super cooled if permafrost thaw becomes more severe connection point there for the mechanical refrigeration system if they needed it so they could uh, if there was some thaw or melt there they could uh, connect the system to it and refreeze it yeah not everyone has the money needed to do that so they're building their homes on beams burrowed deeper into the earth 20 years ago piles needed only six meters to be driven into the ground today 15 meters is needed to find the stability above that is thawing all this, of course, adds expense to a region facing the greatest impacts of climate change. It's not just melting ice caps affecting the Arctic. The ground, too, is warming and changing. Obviously, you can't really stop the permafrost melting because it's all uh, over the circumpolar world. Best thing is to just try to slow down the emissions, CO2. And those emissions come almost entirely from places other than right here. David Coleman, CBC News in Newvec in the Northwest Territories.